edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, we're going to cover the Trigicon MRO. Now, if there is a red dot optic that is going to elicit a visceral reaction out of a human being, it's this, the Trigicon MRO. People love it or they hate it. There is no in-between. And I have yet to find a human being who doesn't have a very definite opinion on this matter. Now, we're going to talk about a lot about opinion here today. I have had this particular MRO since 2017. I have used it in several competitions, notably major competitions like Desert Brutality 2018, Finnish Brutality 2019, Finnish Brutality 2021, and Woodland Brutality 2022, and additionally I just used it in Cornfield Brutality 2022. So I've put it through its paces, and i got to say, I've reached the point I can reach a definitive opinion, most aptly expressed by my friend Sean here. So, the MRO might just suck dick. Yeah, I came to the conclusion it sucks. And it's a frustrating thing, but it doesn't suck completely, and that statement is too broad and too generic to not defend with hard data. So, I think I have to go into the history of this rifle right here and the MRO on it, why it's configured the way it is. This is a Franken gun, and it was built for the express purpose of being lost before Desert Brutality 2018. Let me explain. So, before Desert Brutality 2018, about five months before, there was the horrific mass shooting in Las Vegas. Uh, something that's inexcusable on any level, and it changed the way things were. Uh, Las Vegas is used to having a lot of guns around, do shot show and other shooting events that go on out there, and it was never a big deal. But I was going to be staying in the exact same hotel for shot show 2018 as the incident took place in. And I figured coming in, wearing camouflage, bringing an ammo can full of ammo and a couple rifles and pistols, yeah, that's not going to work out well. I'm going to lose this stuff. So this is a Franken gun with all the spare parts that were laying around in my workshop. Um, the pistol was a Polymer 80 Gen 1, uh, built out of remnant parts of a Glock 22. And basically my feeling was, these are all spare parts, and when I lose this stuff before I ever get to the match, oh well, that will suck, but at least I won't have lost anything I'm really super concerned about. And that's how this site, this MRO, ended up on this rifle. It had been a gift to me. I had no personal uh, uh, investment in it. And same with all the parts of the gun. They were all spare parts. Um, uh, matter of fact, the spare parts were gray, black, FDE, OD. And I rattle canned the gun just before uh, Desert Brutality, just so it didn't look so Franken gun. And afterwards, I actually used it as my test bid for the gun skin that you see on it now, in case I screwed that up. Who cares? So, anyways, the short story version of the story is, I was able to get to Desert Brutality, I didn't lose the rifle, and it performed really good. Um, I couldn't complain how it performed. I did well in that competition. Uh, definitely finished in the top quarter of the contestants. And I was like, hey, this was pleasant to shoot, it worked really good. Got a lot of compliments from people on it. I'm like, huh, okay. Well, it was a franking gun. It'll do its job. I'll leave it as is. And the MRO kind of worked for me. There was one stage, particularly stage seven, where I dumpster fired. And it was all because I couldn't see the targets due to the lighting conditions at the time. But to be fair, I couldn't see them with my naked eye. Can't blame that on the scope. So didn't think anything of it. Flash forward 2019 went to finish brutality again for all the same reasons I'm going to be traveling internationally with a firearm uh, that looks like a military firearm airlines can be stupid governments don't exactly cooperate and while I had all the proper licenses in place both in the United States and Finland why take chances if it gets stolen or gets confiscated once again I'm not gonna cry too much it's all spare parts who cares and I went to finish brutality and did all right, the rifle performed, and I was starting to see limitations of scope, although I hadn't realized it yet. I see them now in retrospect, I did not see them at the time. Uh, then fast forward, I've used it in several other uh, local club matches, 
and it kind of got the job done, but I was noticing that 200 meters and beyond, the scope's got some real problems. It's, you have trouble seeing the target, but I would get my hits and figure, okay, it's a minor detriment, but everywhere else it's performing well for me, and by this time, I've required other MROs through various means and put them on other rifles, and they're doing adequately there. Uh, and in full disclosure, I still, out of five MROs I had at one time, I still have three of them I'm using, one on this rifle, one on another one of my ARs, and one on my AK. Um, then comes Woodland Brutality 2022, and I'm like, tradition! I've got to use the same setup I used at the first Desert Brutality and the first Finnish Brutality I went to. So for the first Woodland Brutality, i got to use the same setup. There's, there's no other setup I can use. And I didn't worry about it. The rifle has performed in the past. I've made hits with it out past 300 meters. Yeah, it had some difficulty, but hey, it's a red dot. I mean, at 300 meters, you're kind of at your limit there. And didn't think anything of it. And then came stage three. I'll put a link to that here in an end card somewhere around here at the end of the video. And uh, that's where the first real problem comes up because iron sighted on a DPM, I engage a set of targets, I hit them, they go down, there's a couple left because, hey, you know, when you're firing bursts, the ammo goes quick when you only have 10 rounds. Picked up my rifle and aimed in, and it's like, hmm, I don't see anything. Stick my head up, oh, there it is, stick my head down. I don't see anything. And I start making shots. And uh, the RO is doing his best to call shots. It was difficult conditions. And finally said, hey, can I just abandon this? And he said, yeah. And I went and collected the pistol targets um, and almost got the rifle targets at the end, but I wasted too much time at the beginning. And man, it, it failed hard. And it was all because the tint on the lens. You look through, it's a blue tint and you take low contrast targets that don't stand out from their background and what contrast that you do have that your eye can pick up, that blue tint just takes away. And that was like, those targets were at 200 meters. And I was like, shit, I couldn't see them. That's a problem. And it cost me a crap load of points on that match. Well, then we go from stage three to stage five. And again, I'll put a link to the Desert Brutality playlist somewhere around here at the end of the video, so you can go back and check that out. And I even titled that video, How to Have a Dumpster Fire. Because while I was shooting that stage, I lost zero. And I've got people to back this up. This is not a case of me, oh, bitching at, uh, I didn't perform well, so I'm blaming my gear. No, that ain't that, because a month before that match, I zeroed the rifle on that particular range with the person who was being the RO on that range. So I knew I had a good zero and I had a person there who saw me do it and saw that I had a good zero. So it was like, this is an equipment failure and the thing lost a zero in the middle of a stage, which if you haven't had that happen to you, I'm thankful for you and I hope it never does because in life there are few things more frustrating than that. So, come out of that stage, the RO on that stage was upset about it more than I actually was. He took the rifle and he made some upgrades to it. He decided I needed a new barrel, needed, I, I needed a better backup rear sight. The uh, MRO got cleaned up and serviced and the gun got generally upgraded and I was like, great! So I can follow my tradition at the first Cornfield Brutality. I will take this rifle and do, use it like I've used it the first of all the other Brutality matches it's been upgraded and changed out, and yeah, it should perform magnificent. And at the end of the video, I'll put a, a, a link to the video of Cornfield Brutality. First stage is a rifle stage in Casarda Drill, and yeah, 100 meters, it got the job done. A little low contrast, the tent was a little annoying, but I got the hits. I, I performed really well on that stage, so I can't bitch. Then I go through two pistol stages, and I go to the long range assault stage, which thankfully was the last stage of the match for me. And that's when the problems come up pretty bad. Mm. Uh, the first thing is I encounter a problem that I also encountered in Finish Brutality 21. And that's, you look through the scope and you get this big comet tail to come off the, uh, the dot. And while it doesn't really affect accuracy, it fricks with your brain because it's annoying as heck to watch and see. And it just takes your mind off of what you're supposed to be doing because you're like, why do I have this huge curly Q comet tail coming off my dots? 
That's another thing. You notice I said dots. Yeah, I have a cluster of cherries out there instead of a well-defined dot. And I know people will say, hey, you have astigmatism. Well, right now, at my age, believe it or not, my vision is still uncorrected. And also, it, um, I don't encounter that problem with any of the other red dots that I own. So that gets to be the sight's problem, not a me problem. And at 400, the first target was at 400 meters, and I looked through the scope when they gave me the sight in procedure, and I'm like, okay, I can make out the target barely at 400 meters. Let's get this done. And the specifics of the stage were that you had to engage with at least five well-aimed shots before you could abandon it, take the penalty, and move on. Surprisingly, I got it in three, and surprisingly is the correct word. But I shouldn't be. Joe, the RO who's calling shots, is an excellent shot caller. And he made that hit, not me. I followed his instructions and got the hit. Um, every t correction he made, I pl applied in, and it worked. And basically what he was doing was when he called out a thing, it was like I had a cluster of dots to pick from. I would just go, hmm, the next dot I see there uh, seems to match what he says. And boom, boom, and sure enough, shot three, he calls hit. No one was more surprised than I, because I had lost faith and confidence in this sight. But it hasn't failed the hardest yet, believe it or not. As I rush forward to the first set of hay bells and crawl up and come into my firing position to fire at a target 150 meter, excuse me, 200 meters away, um, I look through the sight and it's like, I can't see it. I can perfectly see the target stand that it's hanging from. I can see that, but I can't see the target. And... I just start engaging. And ROs are doing excellent about calling out shots, and it's everywhere. Because I'm not aiming at a well-defined place. I'm just thinking, like, I think it should be there. That's where I think it should be. It should be right there. And it wasn't. I finally switched to irons. And that helps because shot came quickly, went to the next target, shot came quickly, engaged the targets on the right, and then I encountered a real problem. Uh, the contrast between the target and the, uh, and the background was even less. And I couldn't see it because even though I'd switched to irons, as you can see here, guess what? You're still looking through the scope, so the blue tint that's preventing you from seeing your targets clearly is still a freaking problem. So fighting through that, I went to a hybrid thing of flipping my rear down and kind of indexing the dot in the front sight and finding where it got hits, and I got the hits eventually. Dashed on up to the second hay bale, eventually got the first of four targets hit, and then parred out, leaving eight targets unengaged. And I can blame a lot of that on this. Before we go any further into the MRO, let's go over its features. All right, one of the really good aspects about the MRO, the front of the scope has a very wide field of view. So a lot of light gets into the scope, which is good for its effectiveness in helping you sight in on your target. The lens is very reflective, but don't worry, they market a kill flash device for this scope. All right, let's go over the controls of the MRO. So on top, you have a big dial that houses a CR2032 button-style battery. And you have two off points. One right here as you turn it all the way over to one side. Your first setting is a night vision setting, low power. Then you go to a high power night vision setting. Then you go to your lowest visible light setting, followed by the next level. Then you have a stop button right in the middle. It turns it off. Uh, then you go to higher settings, all the way up to the number six, which is the highest setting. Additionally, you have two other controls. Here you have your elevation control, and over here you have your windage control. Brightest. Starting off lowest night vision, not visible to the human eye. Highest night vision, not visible to the human eye. Lowest visible setting, position two, then goes to off, position three, position four, position five, and position six, the highest. Notice when you go to the highest setting, you get lots of bleed back around the scope. 
So you usually have to keep it at five as your practical limit as high as you can go. And then four, three is pretty dim. Two and one, almost impossible to see to the human eye. It doesn't come up on camera here particularly well. Okay, here's the first night vision setting on the MRO. It's the lowest one. And here is the high setting on night vision. Another real solid positive of the MRO is it mates up real well for night vision use. I've used it at night with the PES-14, both in training and at One Shepherd out in the field in simulated combat conditions, and it's held up really great. It works really good. The night vision problems are just not there. It's a good combination for night vision. Okay, your windage and elevation controls are uh, in the form of two uh, wheels that you have to move with the base of a cartridge or a screwdriver or a coin, and they are in half MOA clicks. So two clicks equals one MOA at 100 meters. These will be the most frustrating part of this site for you and the fact that the clicks are indistinct at best. Um, in zeroing these, every one I've ever zeroed, and I do have several of these, the clicks are at best indistinct, at worst unfeelable at all, so you're just turning and guessing. It's not like, say, on an EOTech or an Aimpoint, when you're making a click, it's a distinct thing and you know how many clicks you have gone. Now, it's very indistinct here, uh, especially depending on the type of tool you're using. It's a little easier to tell if you're using a screwdriver, if you're using the base of a cartridge, it's almost unintelligible. So you're kind of guessing a lot when you're zeroing this, which can be frustrating because it takes you a little bit longer to get it zeroed than maybe you think it should. All right, so now we've covered how the features of the scope works and everything. Let me tell you what I like about the scope because I've just trashed on it pretty hard and <laughs> how it's worked in a competition. One of the things I like about this scope here is this super big lens it has on the front lets a lot of light in. That's all counteracted by the blue tent, but it lets a lot of light in. And where that becomes an advantage to you is night vision. Of all the red dots I've worked with that are night vision compatible, MRO here seems to be the best. Right up there with EOTech, you know, that's the only one I'd say on par with it. Other, even more expensive optics don't work as well under night vision as the MRO does. Matter of fact, I think the only complaint I can come up with with the MRO and night vision is you only have two real settings and the lowest setting is a tad bit too low for me. Highest setting, tad bit too powerful for me. I wish there was an in-between one. Uh, but it is what it is, you know. It gets the job done, and I was more than willing to live with those limitations for the night vision capability that I felt it gave because I felt it worked out really, really good compared to other red dots I'd used in a night vision scenario. The other thing I like about the scope is, if you take a look here, it doesn't eat a lot of real estate up on your rifle. There are a lot of other red dots out there that do the exact same thing, uh, but they're bigger, they're longer. Um, they just eat a lot more real estate up on your rifle. Um, the MRO doesn't do that. It, it's pretty economical in its use of space, and that's definitely a plus. The other thing I can say about it, this damn thing is robust. After using it in all the brutality, uh, events. It has been banged against armored vehicles. It has been drugged through rocks and gravel and dirt and mud. It's been immersed in freezing water in a trench. And guess what? It did work. Every time I came up, there was a dot. It might have been a cluster of dots. It might have had a comet tail attached to it. But man, when I came up and put it on target, my dots were there. So I had somewhat of an ability to aim. And that's something to be appreciated. I've seen other people in competition use different sites that either have gotten wet and water's gotten them in and they have tons of dots everywhere and they can't figure out which one to use um, or that the site is just busted and been non-functional. Well, this thing seems to take a crap load of abuse and keeps on working. Those are its positives for sure. Another positive here, the control dial on top. While your number of settings are limited, six visible and two IR, uh, and that's pretty limited to a lot of other scopes out there. Um, it's easy to use. It's right there. It's big. It's up. You can crank it whatever direction you need to crank when you need it. And you'll see in competition sometimes I'll be aiming and go, no, I need a little more dot and just right there get to it without any big time penalty to get that done. 
I'm not fiddling with the button. Did I, am I pressing the magnify or the plus button or the minus button? No. This is there. It's the, the uh, numbers on it are clean, plain, large, easy to read. That's all very good stuff. Now let's talk about a few points about it that are bad, um, just besides of what it's done in competition, and that's zeroing the dang thing. These adjustments are crap. Um, they have indicator marks on there when you can turn it. They're supposed to be clicks. I have found them to be indistinct. Uh, on the different MROs that I have, some you can tell if you audibly, if you listen very, 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 very closely, um, you can hear the clicks. Other times, they're not there. And tactile, it's the same thing. Sometimes you can distinctly feel them, but not consistently. Sometimes you don't feel anything and you're just turning the, the knob and it's just going, so you're kind of guessing. You really have to pay attention to the indexing marks on it. Uh, if you're going to say, hey, I got to come right to, you better be watching what you're doing. Um, the sights are calibrated for half MOA clicks. Um, of the three that I'm still currently using, that seems to be the case. Two that I've passed on, no, the, the, the clicks didn't mean anything to the adjustment. You go out there, you do your measurement, I'm like, okay, I got to come five clicks left, you clank on five clicks, it would make almost no difference in the movement, and you'd fire a string or two because, hey, the first time might have been you, second time it's not you, if you get the same result, and then you crank on five more clicks, and all of a sudden it goes way past, and now you're coming back 12 clicks just to get where you want to go. So the on some of the MROs, not all of them, but on some of them, the clicks are utterly meaningless. On the ones I'm still currently using, you know, the clicks generally mean what they say. So, does the MRO have a use? Well, yes, it's a red dot site, and I would go as far as to say a red dot is better than no red dot at all. Um, had I, I had to go to irons in one case in the match, but you know, they're called backup irons for a reason. It does have use. Is that use worth the price of it? Because the price point of the site is somewhere in the four to five hundred dollar range, depending on where you acquire it from. And there, I'm going to say no, because for about half the price, you can get a hollow sun to do the exact same thing and do it way better. So, is this site usable? Well, yes, if you uh, want to use it in a very specific set of parameters. Um, the first parameter I would say that is your limitation on this site is 100 meters, essentially. Every time I look back in my competition videos, the ones where I'm using it in the 100 to maybe 150 meter range seems to work just fine with no problem. Seems when you start going beyond 100 or that 150 mark, yeah, its limitations start to come and hit you really hard. That blue tint is Definitely a limitation uh, for the amount of light, as you can hear one of the ROs say here. But the blue, you can't see the targets. <laughs> yeah. During cornfield brutality, he couldn't see anything through it. I was totally depending on their calls to get my hits. That's not good for long range. On that particular stage, I was engaging at 150 to 200 meters plus on each of the targets. This wasn't up to it. Now. To be fair to the site, a magnifier may have made the difference there. I haven't tested it out with a magnifier, so I can't speak to that. Uh, if you have a night vision requirement where you're going to be using a red dot in, in conjunction with night vision frequently, this is a site to consider. I have found it to work very well in that mode. And it's one of the reasons I have stuck with the MRO for so long, is that's a capability I just did not want to give up. But I'm going to let these sites go by. Now, I'm not chucking them in the can, although people are at the competition when I'm frustrated because I've been hamstrung because this thing's let me down, um, have heard that it's going into the trash can, but the truth is that's throwing money away, and in the modern day, that you can't do that. So I'm going to use them in the parameters that they will function in. One of them right now is on top of my AK, and that's a good place for it to be. Um, these will probably go on my PCCs or guns that I have a purpose where they're going to be used in that 150 meter and closer environment. Um, if I have a, a more general purpose rifles, 
they're going to get better sights like the Comp M5, Aimpoint T2, and things like that because they outperform this site, especially for the price point you're paying. Um, being a little harsh here, but I do feel that part of the MRO's price is, is I'm paying for the name Trigicon and I'm not getting anything better because honestly, I can go to certain websites out there, go buy a, a SIG red dot under $150 that can basically outperform this. I know a hollow sun, which is a couple hundred dollars cheaper than this, will definitely outperform this and give you more reticle options. Also, if you notice throughout this video, uh, what I'm wearing and the rifle I'm holding has changed a few times. Well, there's a specific reason for that. And it goes back to the experiences at the beginning of the video. I had made a video for the MRO prior to uh, Woodland Brutality and the little birdie on my shoulder said, ah, wait till the match is over before you post this video. And disaster happened. And then when the rifle was rebuilt, I reshot the video and the little birdie said, well, you got a new rifle and everything's been fixed and refurbished and the site has gone and been refurbished and upgraded. Why don't we see if that makes a difference? So I said, okay, little birdie, I'll wait. And after cornfield brutality, the disaster came back. So this is the final thing and my final verdict on the MRO and is for the price if it if it fits your parameters then go for it but otherwise as a general red dot I cannot recommend it. We hope you found this review helpful and informative. Please comment, like and subscribe and tune in for future optics reviews.